Hey guys, welcome back. I am Chris. And I am Randy. And you guys are watching Marksman TV. Welcome back to another unboxing video. Here we are getting close to the fall when the floodgates typically open in this industry. So we are getting a ton of stuff. We got a bunch of stuff last week too, but I was sick so we couldn't make a video. But this is going to be a fun one to get into. So without further ado, let's jump into it now. All right, next up we have one from West Virginia. in there real nice. All right, go for it. All right, what we have here is a Marlin 336 chambered in 3030 Winchester. Uh, 3030 Winchester, of course, probably the most iconic hunting round in uh, in North America. Probably put more deer in the freezer than than anything else. Um, very popular rifle. Marlin 336 and Winchester 94, probably the yeah. biggest head-to-head -head competitors. Agreed, because it, if it was right here, it would be. It's not right there. I see if it's a Remington or not. Does it have a JM on it? Does not have a. What is that? Oh. How about JW? Does that count? No, JW Marriott. I, um, I get it as a JM. I say that a JW Marriott once. <laughs> it was a fine place. It was in Little Rock. <laughs> it was in, that's where I stayed when I was passing through Little Rock. It was a fine yeah. little town. Anyway, fine little town. Let me see if that is. In fact, a. That's a JM. Yeah. JM stamped. JM is typically what you want to find on the old Marlin. It is an indication that it was, in fact, a Marlin, not a Remington uh, or now Ruger. So a lot of the Marlin collectors definitely like the JM stuff. Uh, what do you think about the condition of that one? Um, it's got quite a few dings, handling marks, uh, pretty good scrape down the fore end. Um, I can only go good on this, Chris. Uh, customer said very good. I would agree. There's just a couple too many little marks, little dings. The metal actually looks very good. The stock's got some dings and some scrapes. Somebody could probably clean that up a little bit. Being a JM stamp and everything, I mean, it's it's close enough. It's not like we're that far apart on it. So, uh, very nice rifle. We will let the customer know that it's in. All right, up next we have one again from Arkansas. to be an HK, an old HK, and, it works, it works in, there, yeah. right. in the classic gray box. Ooh, that is a nice looking handgun. That is an HK USP. This one's in 40. Surprisingly, the USPs in 40 are a little bit less common. There's not a lot of people who buy into the 40s, but with like HK collectors, it's a little bit more of a premium on the 40 caliber handguns, which in the HKs is the only place I really see that especially in the older gray box type guns. Um, this has, it looks like 10 round restricted. One of these is a 10 round mag, one of them is a 12. Really cool handgun. We've gone over HK USPs and stuff like that ad nauseum on this channel, so I won't go too much into that, but it's probably a V1 it looks like. I'm not gonna say, but it does have a decocker safety on it. Uh, what do you think about the condition on that one? I would say very good, Chris. Yeah, I would say very good to even excellent. Yeah. Uh, I probably won't go excellent because there is some wear on the barrel, but that is typical. You're going to get wearing on the barrel hood. This is normal. Uh, customer said good, so actually um, better than the customer rated in my opinion. So nice, nice condition HK. So let's move on to the next one. Next up is one from a customer in Florida. Let's see what's in here, Chris. Oh, hammer back. Clear. Right. Lots, lots of mag. This is a Beretta 92S. Um, the S models, I don't know if you guys remember, I want to say it was about eight or nine years ago, a ton of these things flooded into the surplus market. 
They were very inexpensive, and even today they still stay pretty inexpensive, mainly because they are a surplus uh, police sidearm from Italy. Uh, a lot of these have a good amount of holster wear, but in my experience, we used to actually carry these. Um, we'd get them in through like Southern Ohio Gun back when they were still in business. And uh, going through a bunch of these internally, they were always very clean. This looks to be the case too. So like most police sidearms, usually shot very little for practice qualification, but carried often. So a lot of external wear, but really clean inside with typically a lot of like low round count. So if you like the Beretta M9 or 92FS and you're more on a budget, this is sort of the predecessor to the 92FS being the 92S. Um, it does have like some atypical controls as far as Amer Americans are concerned. So your magazine release is going to be down here. Pop out the mag. Uh, it does have a left side only safety decocker. And because your magazine release is at the bottom, your mags are actually cut down here. Some modern 92FS mags are actually cut in both places, up in the middle of the mag and at the heel, so they can swap over. But if you have you know, a bunch of 92S mags like this that is only cut at the heel, they will not lock into your M9 or 92FS. But these, again, on the market, not super expensive. So fun shooters and good gun to just have as like a truck gun or a backup. What do you think about the condition on that one? Uh, it's got some corrosion on it, but I would say, considering the age of it, um, surplus good. Yeah, I would call it surplus good as well. You grade it down. I mean, you give it a little bit of leeway when it's a service sidearm, especially with something with some age on it. So knowing that, of course, it has been used and carried off, and it's good for what it is. So that is what the customer said. So we'll roll on with it. <laughs> Yeah, it's very tight. Not a bad thing. So what we have here, Chris, is a Rock Island Armory 1911. Um, Rock Island, in my opinion, makes good 1911s. You know, I carry a 1911 most of the time. Um, do not own one. I have shot one before. And I think at the price point, they're probably a very solid 1911. Very inexpensive. You can get into these things usually for under $500 new. And for what you're getting, they are watered down. They're like 1911 A1 standard GI configuration, how they would have been issued in the Second World War or Vietnam. So just a basic parkerized finish, rear serrations, uh, flat mainspring housing, slab side wood grips. You're not getting any type of loaded or additional type features. So for something that's just incredibly basic for the money, still excellent firearms and they run well. And this one even used is very tight. I didn't handle it, but it looks like it. <laughs> it so, was very tight. It does have a skeletonized uh, standard 1911 trigger, and it looks like an eight round. Is that an eight, eight round? It looks like an eight round magazine. Uh, what do you think about the condition of that one? Uh, quite a few handling marks, Chris. Um, Takedown marks, uh, I would say good condition. Customer said excellent. Uh, looking at it, yeah, there are handling marks pretty well through the firearm. I would I would say I would say high end of good is probably the most I put on this. I wouldn't call it excellent. Remember excellent is like you can't tell the difference between it and a brand new unfired firearm just by holding it. You know, obviously you take it apart you can see wear and sand like gunpowder residue. But holding it out in front of you it should look like a new handgun if it's gonna be excellent. But there's too many marks in here for me to qualify it as that. So uh, anyway, let's. Uh, it's still a nice firearm, and again, for the price, you can't go wrong with something like this. Well, let's move on to the next one. All right, we have another one. It looks like it comes to us from the same seller in Georgia. Smith Third Gen. Model 6906. I feel like we just had one of these in here. Maybe we still do. Um, alloy frame, steel slide and barrel. The third gen Smith & Wesson, these were Smith's real first big introduction into some automatic handguns. Talked about these a lot. These showed up a lot or very often as police surplus, especially the 5903 and 5906. Um, some of these have full steel frames. This one's an alloy, but nine millimeter, kind of mid-size. You definitely could use it as a carry gun. This one's definitely been carried. It has a lot of carry and wear marks on it. 
and it is, let's see, it is double single action with a decocker and I believe, yeah, and a magazine disconnect. So what do you think about the condition on that one? You know, Chris, considering the age of it, um, I would say the high end of good, um, maybe the low end of very good. Yeah, looking at it, I would probably, this is probably a police service sidearm. You can just tell um, it has a lot of holster wear on it, but internally it is very, very clean and not a lot of wear marks on the feed ramp or anything like that. It's been in and out of a holster a few times though. I would probably rate this at good, uh, even as a surplus or retired police sidearm. There's just a lot of holster wear on the slide and the customer rated it at very good. So close enough. Uh, so we will roll on with it and get into the next one. This one also from Georgia, I believe from the same customer as well. Ooh, very tight. Ooh, it's just some, some dry oil in there still. That's a very tight firearm. Another Rock Island, we won't go over too many of the details because we just talked about these. So it looks like we have another one. This one is a 38 Super, however. <laughs> but what do you think about the condition of that one? In the box with one mag. Uh, there are a few handling marks on this. This one's in much better condition. Um, I would say very good, Chris. Yeah, and customer says excellent looking at it. I mean, I could buy excellent. There, there are maybe just a couple small handling marks, but at arm's length, you can't even even see them. So I would, I would take excellent. That's fine. I'd probably say because there are a few marks, I would personally rate it at very good. But excellent's totally fine. I mean, it's close enough. It's right on the line for me. So anyway, we'll move on to the next one. All right. Next up, we have one more from the same customer in Texas or Georgia. It's Georgia. Georgia. Everything always comes from Texas. An old Ruger box. Ruger. Ah, an old Ruger P90 and 45 ACP. I've talked about these early sort of first gen Ruger very large, heavy, blocky pistols on one of the recent weekly used gun reviews. But this is again, Ruger's sort of first introduction into the semi-automatic handgun line. These were really popular. They tried to get police contracts with these, but didn't see much success. Again, Smith & Wesson and then later Glock had much more success with the police market. These are just kind of heavy and bulky for what they are, but they are known for being very, very robust, accurate, and um, very reliable. So lots of buyers on these. And a good thing about these two is they are not super expensive. So you can find these pretty inexpensively on the secondary market. But a P90 from Ruger, what do you think about the condition of that one? I would say very good, Chris. Yeah, customer said excellent. For what it is and its age, actually, I would, I would agree with excellent. I can't really see any handling marks on it anywhere. Uh, I don't really see any marks on the barrel or anywhere, honestly. So I would call it excellent, but yeah. Yeah, I'd go with excellent on this and I, I agree with the customer on that one. So very nice handgun, does come with two magazines and the original box, so very cool. Cool to see those old, old classic handguns. All right, last up, we just got two more. We're gonna go ahead and open them both. This one comes to us from a customer in Illinois. This one's from a customer in Arkansas. All right, let's do it. Like a PPQ. All right, here we have a PPQ. This is a first generation PPQ with the paddle release. These are nice. Since the M2s came out, the M2s have a push button. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of people looking for these because they are not making the first gen PPQs anymore. I actually like the early um, Walther semi-automatics that use the paddle release. You can get to it from both your index and your thumb from either hand. Also, the fact that it is a paddle, if you have it in a holster, there's no way you can accidentally dump your mag. Um, even in a good holster with a, a magazine release button on the side, it is possible to accidentally hit that magazine release and drop your mag. 
I know it's possible because it happened to me once with a Glock 26 that I was carrying. I know everybody laugh at me for carrying a Glock 26 for all those who hate Glock. But I was getting in my car and I don't know how, but I hit the button through my holster. It was a Talon leather holster and it dropped the magazine into the pavement. Luckily I heard it and didn't drive over it. That would have, that could have been bad. <laughs> Luckily it wasn't a uh, Colt 1911 magazine. That happened to Randy. Yeah, dropped it in the snow, went back out looking for it later, and somebody obviously had picked it up. So that's so. to both of us. That's happened to. So for that reason, I like having a paddle because that cannot happen, especially if it's covered. You got to go in a downward motion, which isn't going to happen when it's riding on your hip in a holster. So cool firearm. Uh, looking at the condition of this one, I would call it excellent. There's really not a mark on it, even on the barrel. It doesn't. I don't even know if this thing's been fired. Uh, there is some gunpowder residue on the feed ramp, so it has been fired, but. Definitely not much. But anyway, very nice handgun. Thank you to our customer in Illinois. What do we have there? Well, we have a Colt 1903 pocket hammer holes, Chris. <laughs> very nice. The Colt 1903 32 automatic, they also have the model 1908 and 380, was one of Colt's earliest concealed carry firearms. It was actually made popular by Bonnie and Clyde. They carried one and it was a very popular handgun through the 1920s. Uh, they did see some military service in World War II with the United States, um, not as a standard issue firearm, but some people who carried their own. Also, fun fact, is some Japanese officers who purchased their own sidearms who were not so inclined with the nationalistic approach of adopting a Type 94 or Type 14, they would actually purchase uh, 32 Colt 1903 pocket hammerless and carry those. So you can't find those in like Japanese holsters and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Uh, this comes from a company, I forgot what the name of it, it's a uh, company is called U.S. Armament. So U.S. Armament actually makes a remake, a replica of the Colt 1903, very attractive firearm with a parkerized finish. Original Colts were blued uh, with these really nice Colt medallion grips. Um, they are actually kind of pricey. They sell these things way up there uh, for surprisingly way more than you could actually get like an original, you know, 1920s era Colt. So for whatever reason, there is a lot of value on these. Maybe people just like the fact that it's new production and not, you know, an old rattly, you know, gun from 1915 or something like that. Although I like the old nostalgic stuff, but for good for a shooter. But again, pricey for what they are. Uh, what do you think about the condition of that one? I would say excellent, Chris. It looks like a brand new gun. Yeah, I would agree. It looks excellent to me. What did the customer say? Customer said excellent. Yeah, so we are we are in agreement, but very nice. Nice to end it up on a Colt 1903 pocket hammerless. All right, guys. Well, that is all we have for you today. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. If you come back to these videos and enjoy them, please let us know by hitting that subscribe button. Also, please hit that bell notification button so you know when we're posting these videos. So with that, we will leave you off. I am Chris. And I'm Rand. And you guys are watching Marksman TV. We will see you next time. Georgia. Georgia. <laughs> Home of Colonel Sanders. And peaches. Peaches. And peach pie and peach preserve. By the way, that was really good. Peach preserve whatever your wife made. All right. Uh, hopefully she'll watch those. <laughs>